Welcome to the American Wood Shop. I'm Susie Phillips. I'm Scott Phillips, and today it's a veneer workshop. So A to Z on how to do veneer on a simple chest of drawers with a story. Stay around for the story. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For every woodworking reason, for every woodworking age, Rikon Power Tools, Pro Tools for Tool Pros. RikonTools.com, proud supporters of American wood shops everywhere. Everybody has a piece of furniture that's been veneered. Have you ever tried to do it? This is a workshop on how to do it. We're going to redo this chest of drawers. Susie, have you ever done work like this? Not on my own. I've helped you a little, but not so much. Okay, so here is for everybody that has never tried it before. And Susie, on the line, mm -hmm. I want you to put that, I want you to slide it to this edge right here, please. Okay, on the line. Okay, right there. on that side. Okay. Okay, right there. And what yeah. we're doing with a 4 by 8 sheet of veneer is using a veneer saw. Handy little tool. Now watch what happens. I score it here and I hold the edge of the saw blade up against the straight edge. And I can't go all the way across. Whenever you do veneer work like this, it really helps to have two people working on it. And then Susie, you see how I use that? Mm -hmm. I want you to do the same thing on your side, okay? Okay. She's never used it before. I'm going to slide that off. Okay, so you don't hit the crossbar. And this is just a drywall square. And so go I'm ahead and make the cut. Just hold it down. One, score light cut. Usually you have to do three or four cuts. Okay, so that frees it up. Now, that's all the way through. And that's the easy way to cut veneer. And look at that beautiful grain. Mm -hmm, that's going to really look nice on there. And that will be the front of this chest of drawers. And take a look at this project. It tells a great story. The Woodworkers of Central Ohio Club every week heads to the Furniture Bank of Central Ohio to build these by the thousands. And so we need to head there to see how they make these. And then we'll come back and do a veneer workshop. And one other thing that I will do, though, so that we're ready to veneer when we come back, is use a bit of timber mate wherever there's a countersunk screw hole and fill those countersunk holes. So when we come back, we can get to the sanding and then the veneer work. But now, off to Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to the Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. We're here with Steve Botaw, the president. Hi, Scott. Welcome. Thank you so much for what you're doing here and the welcome, but this is a beehive of furniture activity. What's your mission here? Our, our mission is to really help those families in our community who are struggling with poverty and don't have a good home to live in. So what we try to do is alleviate some of that pressure by giving them used and built furniture so that they can stabilize their home life. Okay, so the chest of drawers that we're going to veneer today on the American Wood Shop was made here by the thousands. That's right. They pump out easily 7,000 pieces of furniture a year. And all together, it's been over 30,000 pieces of furniture. So what's so cool is this. These pieces of, uh, these dressers that are being built today, they're gonna be in somebody's home tomorrow. And it is just uh, such a, a blessing that we have such great volunteers and committed individuals who are willing to make life a little bit easier for our community residents. Outstanding. Well, we want to meet the one of the woodworkers, sure. hear their story, and then see the jigs that you guys use to build great, these. Great, great. Absolutely. Thank you for the welcome. Well, thank you. Mike Quinn, 
Hey, Man. Scott. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mike. Now, behind us, you have a beehive of the woodworkers of Central Ohio. We do. And you've organized this. How long have you been doing it here? We've been doing this for a little over five years now. And there's a line that you use of, for the furniture bank. What is it? Well, we like to say we're turning empty houses into homes. And we, do, and we do that by providing furniture at no cost to uh, people in need. Well, this is an amazing job that you're doing here. And the cool thing, Mike, is that these volunteers come in two times a week and just build pieces of furniture to the thousands. Right, we've got about 35 members of our club who come in on two days a week and uh, construct dressers, not only dressers, but also bed frames and tables. Essentials that any home needs. Absolutely. Okay, and the one that we're going to veneer later in the show today, that will be sold to support this cause. So you don't just have to build furniture, you can support the furniture banks at any level. So get involved locally, whatever you do, because they are all over America. Absolutely. There's uh, 40 or 45 furniture banks throughout the country uh, providing the same services that we do out of our Central Ohio Furniture Bank right here. Okay, well your woodworking matters, Mike, and thank you for volunteering your time. Now it's off to see the jigs and fixtures that they use, and if you want more information or even plans, you can contact the Furniture Bank and they'll help you out with that. Right, or you could also contact our woodworkers of Central Ohio through our website, wocoweb.org. Okay, okay, off to Lou. Time for woodworking. What we're going to do is take you on a whirlwind tour. Okay. This is the first operation. We're taking the raw material that we get from solder, solder furniture making up in the northern Ohio. They sent us panels for us to fabricate the chest. The first operation is going to be panel saw cutting. And those are heavy sheets. Those weigh 80, 90 pounds. That so. cart was designed and built by our woodworker right there, Mike Simpson. And he made that to ease our back pain and uh, it's worked out great. We've had thousands of panels already put through that. Now, Lou Katz has been the brilliant man behind this, and everybody contributes their ideas. Oh, we all do. But from here, it's to the panel saw. Panel saw next. Right now, we're making the shelf portion of the chest, and we'll follow that all through the different operations. This particular part has five secondary operations on it. So panel saw with good dust collection, and then you and then, come over to this saw stop. What goes on over okay, here? Okay, the first saw stop is going to rip the parts to the proper width for the shelf, and we have a template that tells the operator how to set up the saw. So over here at the cross-cut saw, they're cutting these to the shelf board lengths, I take That's it. right. Okay. We cut two at a time. We use sleds and we do no measuring at all. We use our standards and it dictates how big the parts are so that no errors are made in the dimensions of the parts. We make it like the Ford Motor parts. Everything is interchangeable. What we got here is a operation to cut out a section of this center so that we lighten up the chest because it's quite heavy. It's all particle board. We use a track saw and punch cut. We try to keep the dust to a minimum. Now that part is cut out. And we'll go over here and we're going to chamfer the inside of that opening. Okay. The scrap that we generated will be used for another part, the drawer size. This operation here, we, we cut five dados in the panel to support the shelves on the final assembly. The part is nested and clamped. We're trying to make these parts consistent so everything is pre-located. We never lift the router. The router sides on the uh, preformed surface. You know, I did some math. If you add it all up, all the years of woodwork in here comes close to a thousand years <laughs> Probably of so. experience. So on this jig, you're just framing everything up. He's putting the back, putting the on, back on with a crown stapler. Okay, and that squares it up. But also the shelves not only are screwed, but they're plugged. They, we plug, we cover the screw holes with a, uh, a paper cap so no screws are, are showing. Okay, so from this side, you can see exactly what's going on here. And 
I've heard it said that by the time you get the parts to put it all together, it takes about eight minutes. About here, about at this position, yes. Exactly. All the parts go together at this point. So the only way this happens is with jigs and fixtures and, and a fixture. really good road map. Nothing here is so complicated that everybody can't do themselves. Okay, let's go to the drawer section. Now we make drawers here in three different jigs. We have cam locks that lock all the parts together on this fixture. Drill jigs here are, are locating the screw holes and subsequent operations we counterbore and countersink for the screw and then drive the screws in. We then have to put a cleat in here to support the drawer bottom and that's what Bob's doing here. Henry Ford has nothing on you guys. No, we got him beat. Because everything is cut accurately at the first stations back there, this job makes it simple. Right. We don't have to select parts. It is a matter of accuracy in yeah. the sub-assembly. You have to have everything identical. That's right. where your jigs and fixtures come in. All these drawers can go in any case without any ob obstruction. This is a completed chest, ready for painting on the outside where it's rough, and they'll sand it and get it ready for shipping. OK, well, the Furniture Bank of Central Ohio, with the help of the woodworkers of Central oh, Ohio we... and people like Lou, are making a real difference. And this is something that if you're interested in, you can contact them. Absolutely. And they will help you with plans and ideas, and you can do this in your community Come as visit well. us, and we'll be happy to show you our operation at any time and uh, encourage you to do the same, because it's been a lot of fun. Uh, absolutely amazing here, Lou. We have a, a, a bunch of dedicated people that come here every week. It's been five years now since we started, and they, uh, they're here every week. Whoa. It's amazing. Every blessing to you and your mission. You're one got, in a million. We got a lot of good people here and, and uh, really have a good support. And when we need things, they give it to us. And it makes it work, you know, very smooth. Well, it does. Hopefully, it's amazing here. Hopefully we can encourage other people to do the same. Well, and there's no reason why they can't. All right, it's back to the American Woodshop, and we're going to veneer one of these and auction oh, okay. it to support your cause. <laughs> Thank Bless you very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lou. We're glad you could make it here. Amazing. Okay. Very good. Back from a successful tour at Columbus, Ohio. It is amazing what they do there. And my hat's off to everybody. Keep up the good work. Now we're doing edge banding. And to that end, this is maple veneer. And it will contrast with the walnut very nicely. It already has the adhesive on the back that's heat activated. Nice. And what I want to do is lap it over on the top edge. Now, okay. here is how quickly it goes. And this iron is hot, so be very careful. And it's old. So you keep it moving. And when you come to a corner, like Yogi Berra said, you take it. <laughs> God rest his soul. And you bend that veneer right on around, that veneer tape. And you iron that flat. Keep it moving. OK. And then bend it right around this corner. OK. And that way, it will make that chipboard edge go away. And then to trim that off, what you do is you use a low-tech tool, a razor knife. And watch this. Use the wider razor knife or X-Acto knife. You get it started, lay the blade flat on the top edge, hold it at about a 30 degree angle, and like a rudder on a ship, that cuts the veneer right off. Now that's lifted just a bit. Needs a bit more heat right in there. And so, again, once I get this started, I want you to see this process. Come right on in here and see this, because the blade is the key here. And keep them sharp. See how that goes flat on mm -hmm. the surface? OK, and you trim it right off. So now, you use a sanding block, block of wood, 150. Keep the block flat, and you don't really want to roll over the edges of that edge banding. And tack that all off. We need it clean. And the entire field of this, since this was laminated, has been roughed up, sclerified. 
with 60 grit earlier with that power sander that Susie did. So does that feel clean to the touch? It does, it feels good. Okay, yeah. the edges are good. Yeah. So there's some maple edge banding. And now we're selecting the best grain of this. And we need it running this way to get the best yield. But we also need to center up the pattern. Let's see, if we bring it to that edge, yeah. that gives us a perfect pattern. Go. Got diamonds. these three little diamonds right there. So if okay. we get those centered, Very I good. think in the middle, That'll really be a nice little accent. Okay, now I'm going to take this back over okay. here. I know where I need to cut it okay. for that. And I will lay this and cut this to an oversized length. And this is just how quickly all this goes. Do not be casual with this saw. I want to keep it flat against that edge, never riding on top where it could harm my fingers that are holding that straight edge down. And the cool thing about this is, as long as this is roughed up, this has a wonderful adhesive. It's peel and stick. And do not try to line up edges. Because if you do, you're going to be short somewhere. Where you want a about a half of an inch overhang all the way around. How am I on your end? Okay. okay. You, got a, you got a little bit over. Okay, that's okay. And that looks balanced. The grain's running the right way, right there. And here's the thing. You start in the middle, always in the middle, to press air bubbles out. And you use the same block of wood to gently go from the middle of the field out and get that flat without any air bubbles. Right. And then, what do you think? Do we have it? Looking that's good. Perfect. I think so. Okay, the balance pattern, that's really good. And now this is the key. With overhang all the way around, we're going to flip this upside down and trim off the excess. Okay. okay, let's get that done. Okay, now go ahead and cut that front edge off. And you can see the dark edge, it's hanging out. And that's key whenever you veneer something. Never try to cut a piece of veneer and have it go precisely where you want it to. Always have a little extra hanging over. So there's your first score, okay, and you'll do a total of three or four more until that comes off. And it's key to keep that blade flat against that edge because if you angled it, there's a chance that we could, when we sand through the final sanding, see the edge of the chipboard. Or press right. board. Yeah, it needs a couple more passes there. Yep. You're doing great. Good job. Hey. <laughs> and that's across the grain. I gave you the hard stuff to cut. Yeah, okay. I saw that. <laughs> it's always easier to cut with the grain like this, keeping that blade flat against the edge. Now we'll trim this off and take a look at the finished cuts. She's keeping it flat on the surfaces here, and you can chamfer the edge ever so slightly, like so, like that, just to get rid of the fuzz, mm -hmm. and that is a beautiful top. Now, let's flip this around, like so, set it down, okay, like that, and make sure this is clean with a tack cloth after the sanding, and again, these were filled, the screw holes were counterboard and there's filler in there and it's sanded with 60 grit. And it's time to lay the side pattern on using another technique that works beautifully. And trust me, keep an eye on that grain. I want it pointing up. And it is, although that's pretty straight grain. And in this case, I've got a good straight edge I'm going to butt right up to the bottom like that. And I'm going to bring this right on down okay. with it overhanging. Remember, work in the middle. Uh-oh. We've got, oh, that will be edge banded. That's good. Okay, we're good all the way around. Work from the center out. You hear those air bubbles going away. Go on like right that. here. Get that right there. Okay. A little one right there that we can press flat. That's good. 
And when everything is nice and flat, now I'll use a razor knife. Now watch what happens here. This is going to be maple edge banded. I can ease this blade straight through to the far side like a rudder on a ship. I trim this edge right off. You don't have to use a veneer saw. You can use the utility knife, or the razor knife, rather, just like that. So I'll trim this off using this technique, and then it's on to the drawers. Okay, that's all profiled very nicely. Looks great, Scott. Ready for the edge banding. Yeah. And now I know you have a job to do, so I do, but I thank you. you. This is really, really fun and easier than I thought it was, so okay. thank you. So you're going to do a bunch of these for the furniture bank, right? Sure, if you help me. <laughs> <laughs> there you have All it. All right, okay, you, you got the drawers and everything? I All do. to yourself. See ya. Okay, now here's the process. Next I'm going to get into edge banding everything. The drawer fronts will get done, and also the edges along the case here will get done and I'll trim that off and sand it just like we did before. And then what I can do is start to veneer all the remaining surfaces. So I want the grain on the drawer fronts to all coordinate and line up together. So I've cut those to match and I apply those, work out the air bubbles, make it solid and flip it over and use the saw to trim off the excess from the edges. A little bit of light sanding, and then we can take a look at how this is coming together. Okay. Now, all the veneer is completed now, and I'm going to roll this solid chest up. And look at that grain pattern. That's just beautiful, the way it flows back and forth, adds balance. And this does remind me of a shaker chest. It's symmetrical, it's balanced, it's simple. So I have shaker pulls here. So it's off to the outside to spray the shellac. I'm using a one and a half pound cut of garnet shellac with a little bit of trans tint dye in it. And you can see how I use that wood to hold the knobs up. And with the gun set on the diagonal, that gives me the spot pattern cut down on the flow. And this is the way that I can, with minimal tape, get in and do the detailed areas without spraying the drawers. Now, when I dial that like that, that gives me that pattern or like that, this pattern. Now watch, with the grain. And you notice as I spray, I pull the trigger on and off. I'm not wasting material with this high volume, low pressure spray system. So there's a beautiful walnut drawer front. And I'm gonna set this up now for this pattern. Now watch what I do. Keeping the point about eight inches uniformly away from the material, I'm moving my whole body as I spray. So I'll use this technique to get three great coats of this on. Then once the finish is dry, I use a wooden template to drill the holes for the knob. That's how it all goes together. What a beautiful day. Whenever you can complete a project like this, it's going to a good cause. And the furniture bank really is a great cause. Every day they get pieces of beautiful furniture like this to folks that really need a little bit of help getting going. And the woodworkers of Central Ohio with that shop set up in the furniture bank, they're making a difference. They're making their woodworking work. And this is something that can be done all over America. So check it out on the web, the Furniture Bank in your area and support it. 
This will be sold at Artistry and Wood in Dayton, Ohio to support the Furniture Bank in Ohio. Every blessing to you and your wood shop and get busy out there. Make a difference. Thanks a million. See you next week. Woodcraft since 1928. Providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For every woodworking reason, for every woodworking age, Rikon Power Tools, Pro Tools for Tool Pros. RikonTools.com, proud supporters of American wood shops everywhere. For more information behind the scenes at the American Wood Shop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Aberdeen, Bonnie, laddie,